I'm back and I know it's been a crazy crazy long time since I've been posting anything and honestly I hope that it's it's worth to wait for the today's video. Actually, I was very, very excited to to make that video, and I was really, really excited to meet with Frank Zinkwitz, and he is the producer of Frank Showcars, and he have amazing uh, Instagram, amazing blog. He's doing amazing photos. So I really wanted to meet him, and I wanted to show uh, to you how he works. So a couple of weeks ago, I traveled uh, to a totally different state in Germany just to meet him. And uh, honestly, guys, I hope you're going to enjoy today's video. Hey, so Hi. so nice to see you so finally nice in person. So finally at your place and I was so excited to to visit you. So we are here at your home yes. and uh, also this is your studio. It so is, yes. <laughs> and uh, so where is it? So please just show please us around and where to go. To the studio. Okay. After you. This is it, thank you. Okay. So yeah. this is, um, then it's just uh, a tiny room with full of Full of cars. Full of cars, yeah. <laughs> that's. Um, I think it's a pain for my girlfriend, but um, yeah, I've got the the models all over the place, okay. also in the cupboards, in the basement, um, and then a tiny little studio here where I'll take the pictures of the. Okay, car. this is the studio when you're working, and it's it's full of cars, and wow, I mean, you have like um, a tons of it, right? Yes, it's it's actually a ton. <laughs> and, and, and since how long you've been collecting them, or I remember took over my life in um, the COVID times. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably a year, uh, yeah, at 15th of June last year, mm -hmm. I started to um, to do an Instagram account and to buy more models. And I think I got three times the models. So basically COVID brought the model cars as a sort of profession into your life. Yes. You're taking picture of the model cars through restarting the, the Instagram, your amazing Instagram account, because Frank has an amazing account. And also your your blog is, is basically super awesome. So thank you very you much. Have super amazing pictures. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, so this was the point where you started and you became pretty much very successful with that. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, being home in a lockdown and like um, opening eBay, like, yeah, I could use another Porsche hour is and mm -hmm. then it's kind of like oh there's another one and, blah, 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 and <laughs> so you started to order cars that yes, was a dangerous yeah. point ordering yes, everything exactly. online i think so oh, okay the which which are the the most special ones or which are the most favorite ones uh, it's so you probably as a collector know that there is no favorite model and um, i've got so many different favorite models so um, i've got a lot of finish line models mm -hmm. meaning um, like they look after the race or like like they finish the race and uh, my friend jochen kiesli who also has a nice instagram account um was so kind to to do the finish line for me and it, these are like very special models because it's it's a limited edition from exoto which is rare um, itself but also with the finish line it was a, a rainy race and if you take a closer look you can really see where um, the rain was running along the car and then sometimes it's even the rain was coming from above and then the car acts and like accelerated and then the raindrops um, go that way also the windscreen wipers they're smearing so it's they really really tell the story and that's wow. what I love about the models this is really cool and I also hear you have the the lemon uh, lemon models yeah right exactly in. and what is that you picked for us for today to show today um since i'm a big walter Röhl fan i picked a sanremo um, porsche for you so that's a, a rally car which was um, very special for walter Röhl and uh, it broke down sadly in that race when mm -hmm. he was leading but um it's a super nice car and um, I thought maybe we can do a jump okay. um, a jump picture so to show you how jump. I would <laughs> <laughs> how I would do that and um, like how poor it's on the set but then uh, how it turns out um, digitally afterwards okay so basically you have to explain us everything how you work because this I think would be super super interesting for the guys out there how you really start the process because the end result is just really amazing and uh, you know we would love to know everything from the beginning from the concept like how you're setting up also the, the mm -hmm. lights and so you just you know have to have to show us everything step by step and I think then let's 
just started. Sure, of course, happy to. <laughs> just to give you a quick introduction of, of how I do that. So um, first, of course, check the angles, like how does it look um, from, from which perspective and what could I do with it. But since this has such a history, of course, um, I first need to check the history and then need to see how the race looks like. Mm -hmm. So um, the San Remo race was a pretty dry one. There were a lot of jumps and, and a lot of dust. Um, so that's why I said, maybe let's do a jump picture. So then the first step is that you collecting some data of yes. the, the history. So as I said, like these are the pictures I gather up front and then you see it's super dry, it's dusty. Also, um, it's not like a, a blue sky or anything. That's why I chose a gray background already. Uh -huh. And then um, with the, the different lights, like is it a blue light, is it a yellow light? Um, we can also change the, the temperature. And then here you okay, see this, this is a jump. Yeah, <laughs> see these, these kind of jumps. Um, and then we got a gravel surface, so um, I will also prepare a gravel surface. I built a small diorama back in the day, so like mm -hmm. diorama is if you're faking the surface, if, if you're faking the background. Okay. And um, actually I did it with um, gouache colors and sand and gravel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is that you physically... You yes, really yes, exactly. So I don't have to fake a uh, surface in, mm -hmm. but I do have the realistic surface. Okay, that sounds cool. Or more or less realistic mm -hmm. um, surface in 118 scale. And it's just like, how how did the car look like? And then what I find nice from the auto model, because um, usually if the, the rally cars have long antennas, yeah. um, they're super small and super short. Mm -hmm. But that one actually seems pretty close to reality. So it's, so super it's really, long really antenna. long. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It can be even longer, maybe, no? Like until it here. It could be also longer, <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm already happy that it's that long because usually it's just a short one. Mm -hmm. Great. And now, what is then the, the next step? So next step would be preparing the set. So okay. I, um, um, I know what to do now, I got a concept in the head, so um, I'll prepare the set. Then I prepare the folders on the on the server and then I'll set everything up so we can we can start. Okay, so we're preparing the set now. Yes. Great. <laughs> so that's, a, um, that's a surface. As I said, as it was I don't know, not the best weather, I picked a neutral gray background so mm -hmm. I can easily exchange the background and swap that on, uh, in Photoshop. Okay. So, mm -hmm. And then you you creating basically this uh, neutral surrounding with this uh, with this uh, how is called this basically shaders I, or I think so. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's just to um, not have that harsh light, so to mm -hmm. have a bit more diffuse light. Then to to um, fake the jump, I just gathered some things that's from a light, for example, okay. um, or I cut rubber off, or just random things um, mm -hmm. where I can place the model on. So for now, I think maybe it would work like that. Um, let me also bring that one in. Okay. okay. Next would be to um, bring the camera to the set and then see um, how it looks like and what would be the perfect angle for the. Okay. For the The light is coming from the side. Mm -hmm. so cool. But I just, um, you know, what's super important for a Porsche is that you do have this part very visible with a nice lighting on it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I'm trying to achieve now. Okay. Are you just using this kind of uh, white boards and black boards around the around the model, basically? That's a good idea, actually. Maybe I can use a white board instead of a black board. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So what we've done now, we um, did 72 pictures um, to have different points of sharpness in, in the picture. And as you can see here, that one, the first one is sharp here, but the further you go back, the less sharpness you have, like for example here on the, um, on the spoiler or on the rims. And then if you combine and merge all of these pictures, you will get uh, sharpness from front to back. So here, you do have everything perfectly sharp. First of all, give you the possibility to see all of the details of the car, and second of all, it makes it easier in post-production because then I can easily cut it out, which is um, the next step, and um, then we can see what we can do with the background. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so what I also would like to do is to have rotating wheels. So therefore I also cut out the wheels. And then we can look for a background. So now we're having the end result and it's really really beautiful so I'm really I'm blown away and thank you so much again having us here and I think it was super interesting to see how you work and what is the concept behind your pictures and how you're really setting up everything so thanks again and uh, guys please check out Frank's uh, Instagram account Frank Shokar definitely and of course don't forget to subscribe for my channel and I'm coming back very soon to you so bye thank you very much bye